Oh yeah, Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback out of Alabama, the 5'11 and a half, 199 pound prospect. Uh, you know, ran a 4.47 in the 40, though he did have a Liz Frank injury in his foot, which probably limited him a little bit. And, you know, an overall, a good athlete, probably would be better minus that injury. In 2023, he played 482 coverage snaps, allowing just a 48.7% completion percentage for 205 yards and one touchdown. He did only have four pass breakups compared to the 16 he had the year before and no interceptions. One of his strengths is his smooth hips. He's really good in and out of breaks and quick with his hips. He's also a highly confident alpha personality that is not going to back down from a challenge anywhere. And he's a really disciplined defender, not committing a single penalty in 2023. One downside, though, is that he's only going to play on the boundary. He only lined up 28 total snaps in the slot at Alabama in his three years. He's got adequate but not great speed. He does make up for it a little bit with his football IQ and the way he plays faster receivers. And then he's got less than ideal ball production. While he was targeted 146 times in his career, he only had two interceptions despite breaking away 21 other passes. He's a willing and aggressive tackler, but occasionally his form gets away from him, as you see in this particular one where he kind of throws his shoulder at it. But the impressive part about this play that I wanted to come back and revisit is just see him in coverage up there, and he has this instinct to break away from that coverage and come down and try to make the tackle. But you see, even against bigger ball carriers, when he wraps up, he can bring down a guy. And he's not afraid to get up into the mix and run support either. And you see a couple different plays here where he comes up and he attacks Jatavian Sanders, the big tight end from Texas here on this play. And he's really great at covering bubble screens where he's able to split defenders and blow the play up in the backfield. Another great aspect of his game is his communication skills. He's constantly communicating on the back end of that defense, which has been a huge issue in years past for the Packers secondary. This game against Texas was actually one of the more challenging games for him in the 2023 season, going against two potential first-round receivers in Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell. And on this rep, he actually ends up giving up a big play to Mitchell, but he was in good coverage all along, you see on this play, and it was just an outstanding throw by Quinn Ewers to Adonai Mitchell, who makes a great catch on the sideline. And while he wasn't targeted on this route, he ran step for step with Xavier Worthy on this route, and that is not an easy thing to do against a 4-2-1 running receiver. And then this was the only touchdown he gave up all year, to Adonai Mitchell where he was playing outside leverage and was really relying on inside support from the linebacker. Heading into the season, it was actually widely viewed that McKinstry was going to be CB1 heading into this year's draft. And through the the mix of things, Terry and Arnold kind of rose up a bit. And then Quinion Mitchell obviously burst onto the scene with the Senior Bowl. He's kind of slipped down a little bit further. Um, in many cases, somewhere on the board, uh, he's even below, you know, Cooper DeGene, who a lot of teams apparently see as a safety. So why would Green Bay want him? Well, I think, one, his skill set fits with what Jeff Halfley would like to do in the cornerback room. He's got that kind of dog mentality, that physicality. And on top of that, his confidence is through the roof. And, you know, the best part of this, as we kind of talked about a little bit earlier, is he's confident and aggressive but was still disciplined enough to not even draw a penalty this past season. So those are things that are great. And while, you know, his testing shows that he, you know, didn't run the ideal speed, he did have a Liz Frank injury in his right foot, I believe it was. So he's probably still not running at full speed through that injury at this time. So he is probably faster on, you know, a track than he is there. And you saw some of the clips where he was running stride for stride with Xavier Worthy. Worthy. Um, granted, obviously, he had somewhat of a, you know, a lead on that back pedal bailed. But he, I think, has the ability to be a really, really strong CB2 for a team. I don't know that he'll be a lockdown number one guy, but he will do well on the outside opposite of that. But the concern with taking a guy like McKinstry for the Packers is you're you're pretty confident in at least your outside corner or your boundary corner guys. A lot of people love Carrington Valentine and I thought he had a great rookie season, but you know, he is primarily going to be a guy that plays the boundary. You're not going to see him in the slot much. And Jair, you don't want to exclusively play in the slot because you lose some of that on the boundary. So 
where they're lacking some depth is more on the interior with that slot ability. And McKinstry doesn't really have a lot of that. So you are potentially losing out on some of that ability by taking him over somebody a little bit later, like a, a Max Melton potentially, or going specifically after a slot cornerback like a Mike Sanrasil or a Jerrion Jones or even a Renardo Green who has that versatility to potentially play safety. Um, but, I mean, he is aggressive around the ball. He's swatting balls away. He is physical at the catch point and knocking balls out from receivers. And that's a really great thing. And while his interception production was not great, I think it was just two interceptions over the course of his uh, college career, he has the ball skills to do it. He just didn't execute on those interceptions. So you get a little bit more of even luck in some of those situations, and he's going to be disruptive and force turnovers. At the very least, he's batting away balls and, you know, forcing another down or forcing turnovers on downs or forcing a fourth down, whatever it may be. So there's a lot of upside to Kool-Aid McKinstry, but I do think he is ideally a guy that you'd love to see fall to 41. I think 25 might be a little bit rich for Kool-Aid McKinstry, but I could see the Packers potentially going that way, depending on how the board fell, especially however many tackles go off the board before 25 and how many corners go off the board before 25. Because you could see upwards of you know seven tackles, three or four corners, depending what you're looking at. So the option is there. You could even you know pass him up at 25 and then potentially trade up from 41 to you know somewhere in the early 30s and pick that like you know 33 34 35 those premium picks at the beginning of day two and take him and it would be great value but like i said i think he would be a nice option and i think he would fit well in this defensive scheme with jeff halfley and uh you know i want to know what you would do like would you take mckinstry is 25 too rich for you or is 41 the ideal spot or you just not want him at all let me know in the comments below and as always, check out the playlist up here of all the other player prospect profiles that I've done so far. Uh, this is the fifth one. We'll have a few more before the draft comes around. And uh, tune in to tonight's live mock draft, midweek mock draft at 9.15 Eastern time to join me and give me some feedback on some of the picks that I'm making in a mock draft live on the Green Bay Football Corporation channel.